Hey guys, I'm Liam, and you're watching Jeep Cheap TV Review Stuff. Alright, today we have another product for you that is in the headlight segment. So we made the last video, people seem to really like it, and I get a ton of emails asking if I will review their headlights. But Usually I say no, today I'm saying yes, and here's the reason why. We have these headlights by Loyo, L-O-Y-O, -O, Loyo. They're an LED headlight. On the box here it says, with EMC. With EMC, like all over the place. And I had to look that up. I think it's an anti-flicker thing, which could be really good. As you can tell, whenever you watch a video, LEDs have a flicker to them. Maybe these have less of that or not at all, which would be really great for people like me who like to film their stuff. And we will see that later in this video when we install them on one of the vehicles. And yes, they were sent to me for free. That's something that you have to disclose, right? If you're doing an honest review. Here you go. There's your unboxing. Not a lot to see here. Nothing terribly fancy. The headlights are wrapped in foam, a little foam topper. It's not like unboxing an iPhone, but it's car parts. We have an adapter here, an adapter. Not sure what for, but we'll figure that out. And here's the headlights. So, you leave the top here. There's text on the top and it tells you that it goes this way. Also, text on the top states DOT SAE VOR HLP 22 12 volts. And then it's got a part number at the bottom. But what's important is the DOT SAE. These are road legal. You can put them on your road going machine, like that one, or like a truck or anything else. This is a five by seven headlight. It's a really common size. It fits this Jeep, it's going to fit the Cherokee, it'll fit the Comanche, it'll fit a bunch of other vehicles that are not Jeeps. Um, they will fit on our ambulance, as we reviewed in the last video. And honestly, this is really lightweight, like really lightweight. I'm pretty happy to hold on to it. It feels like a quality product. It's a plastic lens, but it seems like a very nice plastic lens. Um, and you do want plastic, right? It's going to be more ductile. It's not like glass. You know, these headlights behind me, they're like, I don't know what they are now, like 12 bucks, 24 bucks, something like that. I don't know. You have to replace the whole assembly, just like this. You have to replace the whole assembly if anything goes wrong. 12 bucks, not a big deal. These are over $100, I think. Let's check their website. They have various deals and discounts, and I might have one for you at the end of the video as well. But typically, LEDs are going to be north of 100 bucks, and you want something that's going to be chip resistant. So I don't know exactly the nature of this plastic, how it does for chip resistance, but typically something more ductile like plastic is going to be more favorable over glass, which you may have to replace more often. The reason I chose these headlights and keep teasing this is this design here. We're going to see if it looks okay to put an imitation round headlight on the square headlight YJ. This Jeep is the only Wrangler to ever have square headlights. And to take that away from it is kind of blasphemy. But we're gonna put these on, we're gonna see how they look, and we're gonna decide for ourselves if we have broken the laws of Jeepdom. That's what we're here to do today. Also, it's mimicking a Bronco, which is kind of fun. Also, Loyo boasts that these have a really good spread pattern. So when the light comes out, it's going to make a really nice pattern, illuminate the ground. We're going to test that to the best of our ability. It's kind of hard to test, but we'll do some nighttime on off. We'll see how that is. Supposedly it's not going to blind oncoming traffic, which is a huge complaint with LEDs because they're so bright. They're great for the driver. They're not great for anyone else on the road. Also, this is a DRL, daytime running light, so it's going to stay on when your accessory lights are on with the Wrangler that would be these. When those are on, these, this will be on. And it's a switchback, which means it's going to turn to amber when you turn on the turn signal, which I'm really excited for. So you've got your main three, 
and then you have two extra wires that you're gonna have to plumb yourself. Plumb, right? Electricity, plumbing. And I'll show you how to do that this time we did in our last video and I apologize for that. What else do you have in the box? Well, like I said, we have this adapter here. Really all this does is it goes on here and then gives you these basic blades. So if you don't have that pin out, then you can use this adapter to easily convert it to like anything. Convenient. In the box, you also have the other headlight. It's great when they come in pairs. And you have the other adapter. And you have some screws, which I have no idea what these screws go to. But you get another pair. You get more foam. And that's it. You also have a picture of the diagram, ground, low beam, high beam, DRL, turn signal. Now, mind you, DRL and turn signal, they are shown in the box. However, their colors are not dictated. They're red, we have a green, it is not shown in the box. Good luck. What else do we have? We are showing, this is fun, this is fun. We have the high beam, which is both at the same time, it appears. We have the turn signal, which is the little horizontal guy. We have the low beam, which is the lower of the two. Actually, surprisingly, it's usually flipped, but good to know. And we have the DRL, which is the almost complete circle. Yeah. First impressions are that I'm impressed with these lights. I like the way that they're built, I like the way they're constructed, they're really lightweight, which take that as it will. It, it has no reason to be super heavy, but you know, it feels good. It's got fins on the back for dissipating heat. Maybe not enough, but I believe them. I believe they did their homework. We'll find out. The only thing that I have a comment on that should be noted is there's no instructions. The best you get is the back of this box. Show. Sure. That's why I'm here today to show you how to do this. This is your instructions because these are some super sick looking lights. I want you to install them on your Jeep. I want you to enjoy them and I want you to make sure that they're going to function properly. So let's get started. For this first part, normal headlight removal, all you're going to need is one of these Phillips head screwdriver. You could use a drill, be a man, use your screwdriver. It's going to be okay. All right, you've been a man. If you're actually not a man, then be whatever you want to be. Meh? Be whatever you already are. I don't know, I don't care. Be someone who uses a screwdriver. There we are. Okay, that cover comes off. Now you have four more screws. One here, here, there, and there. Now, be someone who uses a screwdriver and use the screwdriver. Don't drop the screw into the grill. I'm missing one. You'll notice the headlight wants to fall out. Don't let it. We were able to do all of this without even popping the hood. Headlight comes out, there's a connector on the back, you just pull straight out. You don't have to squeeze anything. Just pull straight out. There you go. Now you compare it. Are they the same size? Mm, yeah, they're the same shape. Mostly. I will note, this has a flat face. And this has a curved face. 
should not matter at all for what we're doing. But now you know. Now this is where things get interesting because you can choose. Do you want this little doohickey be on the inside like a Bronco or do you want it to be on the outside like not a Bronco? We're gonna go Bronco style, so why not? We're gonna connect our connector to the one that's in the grill, which you can see now, it's dirty. And then we are gonna have more work to do with the DRLs and turn signals. And we are going to do that later. And we're gonna to have to pop the hood for that. But for now, take this guy. Very careful not to scratch. Now, I, sorry, I peeled the plastic off of these. Normally I would leave it on until they're fully installed. There you go, not bad at all. Drop that in. Now, hold on, more talking. See how this has a long cord, the other one did not. So you are now gonna have this flopping around in your engine bay, and you might want to zip tie it to something because if it is longer than you prefer, then it could hit something that you don't want it to hit. So keep that in mind that you might need to zip tie this down. It's quite a bit longer. In you go, upside down. There you go. Shockingly, they go in the same way they came out. Notice how this is asymmetrical, the two that are closer together at the top. And this is the part where having three hands really comes in. Or a good screwdriver. The magnetic tip. Mine's not magnetic. I'm just lucky. Ooh, that wants to fall out of there. I like to get opposing corners first. Very carefully. Now when I took this out, the headlights were adjusted properly. I don't know if changing the headlight is going to change the adjustment, but if it does, your adjustment screw, and you cannot see it from this view, it's a Phillips head and it's right here on the side. And as you twist that, it's going to rotate it like so. There's one on the top too, right here in the top center. As you twist that, it's going to rotate it this way. If you do not adjust your headlights, they will not illuminate well at all. It matters way more than people think. So adjust your headlights to get a nice, good picture. Screws go back in. Now you've done someone with the screwdriver in about five minutes of the time. And you got a new set of headlights. Believe it or not, the other side is the same exact procedure. Ta-da! Now let's see if they work. Oh yeah. That looks really good. Headlights work. Now we want to get the daylight running lights, daytime running lights, and turn signals to work. So you're going to use your screwdriver again. Notice the hood is popped. We don't need that yet, but you will. Screwdriver again, and you have two Phillips head screws here. Mine are already removed. Daytime running light comes right on out and you have three wires on the back here. Now this is the part where we are going to verify which wire does what. So on this Jeep, we have something that says major, minor, and ground. I don't know what that means. So I'm gonna use a trick that I use, that I learned on YouTube. This is a paper clip. It's a small paper clip and a small diameter. And you can take this and you can shove it right in next to the contact. So this is a rubber seal here to keep weather out. But this will go right next to the wire. Ooh, <laughs> I made it angry. Look at that, I can make it brighter. That's probably a bad sign for my wiring, but anywho. And then you can take your multimeter, you can take your black end and go to ground. I have a CB antenna here, which is grounded. And you want to be able to see that. And then you take this, touch it here, Paper clip. So now we know, see 12 volts, we know that minor is a running light. Now let's check our turn signal. You turn your key to ignition, you'll be granted the turn signal. 
and we can check this again. Remember, we're on minor. Still 12 volts, not changing. Now we're gonna go to major, stick it in the hole. Get it to where it feels like you're touching something in there, you'll know. Touch this guy and touch to here. See how it's going up 10, 11? It's going to 12 volts and going back down. So that means that major is your turn signal. What do you do with this information? Well, this is how we are going to check what wires are what on the headlight. So I'm gonna go back over to minor, which again, on any vehicle, major and minor mean, mean absolutely nothing. So just remember the color of the wires and all the other good stuff. So now I have a good clean 12 volts coming out of there. Now for this, you just want a test wire. I have a wire that's got two nice crimped ends on it and I happen to have an alligator clip. So I'm just going to clip this to my paper clip like so. And then I'm going to gently run this into the engine bay. Now that we're in the engine bay, we have this live wire here that we're going to touch to the green and the red. Green. Looks like our turn signal. Red. That's our DRL. DRL, R, DR, red, right? We're guessing here in green. Turn signal. Red, DRL, green, turn signal. Okay, for this part, now you're gonna want to splice into these wires. If you have a different vehicle that has a different connector, hopefully you're more fortunate than I would be on this Jeep because this right here is about as good as it's gonna get. I'd have to splice into these wires. There's no inline connector for me to take apart and put something in line to where I'm never cutting a wire. If you're lucky enough, you can get something like that where it's a connector on both ends and you can splice off of it. In this case, we're going to have to do the splicing ourselves. So in review, we have major and minor on this, on this particular light. The major being the turn signal. So the major wire here is gonna go to the green on your headlights because green is turn signal. Red is DRL, which is gonna to go to the minor. There are multiple ways you can splice into a wire. The fastest, easiest, cheapest, and least reliable is one of these guys. So how these work, open it up, you put the wire you want full power off of, on the pass through, and you put your new wire on the one that terminates. Clamp it down, squeeze it on, you're done. I do not prefer these. I don't recommend these, but they are quick and easy. And in the right circumstances, they'll last a while. On an off-road vehicle, they'll last maybe a year at best. Probably your cleanest option is to get a connector. This is a three pin connector. It's what I had on hand. You would only need two for this, but you would take, you cut the wire, you put one end into here. You would have another wire that's pinned with that one to the next hole, and then you would have the rest of your wire here and your new wire here. And so that's making that connection. It's a waterproof connection, and that would be pretty clean. You can also cut away the insulation, and then you can solder a new wire around it. That's a method I use often. Reason why I like it is because once it's wrapped up in electrical tape, it's pretty safe, and it's really not gonna come apart. In an off-road vehicle, I like that option quite a bit. The last one is you could take the entire wire harness and create a junction where you can attach various wires to that. And then you can attach multiple accessories that way, which if you're gonna do rock lights or anything else, I would recommend something like that. It's very similar to how I wired my Commando. So that way you can just keep adding accessories to it very easily. Now in full disclosure, because I'm going to keep this as a temporary setup. I don't know which one of my Jeeps I want these headlights to be on, and I don't want to start cutting into wire harnesses. For the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna use the paperclip method. 
and uh, just get these to work well enough to show you what's going on and I'll decide later if they are the lights for this particular Jeep. Okay, so here's what I did. This is not what you're gonna do, but this is what I did. So I took my paper clip, I soldered it to this wire here, put some heat shrink over top and I got my blade connector. Now this, this is what you're gonna do. Whatever wire you run, you're gonna have a male spade connector on the end of it. You can get these anywhere, get a crimper, it's not a big deal. You'll get those on there. A little bit of heat shrink over this is usually a good idea as well. For me, because again, I'm not sure if these are the lights for this Jeep, maybe the other Jeeps, I have my paper clip that I can just shove in here temporarily so we can do our demonstration. And this is what it looks like with both DRL and turn signal operating. Very clean, very nice. Two quick things to note. This is what I was talking about before. You can see there's a lot more slack in your wire now because it's longer. So you're gonna to wanna to zip tie that to something so it's not jostling around. Also, these spade connectors that they have in here or blade connectors or whatever you call them, very high quality. There's a nice click when it goes in. I was quite impressed with that. And that's a supercharger. Now your brand new Loyo headlights have been installed on your Jeep and they look dang good. Also notice that this sidebar here is white and when we had the turn signal on, it was amber. That's the switchback I was talking about. Very cool, very clean, very classy design. Headlights, hey, we can see the commando. It's a pretty nice pattern, but you can see that the Z shape right there and there, they're not at the same height. So we wanna make those the same height. We'll adjust that and see how it looks. But overall, nice clear pattern. Very easy to see, good color as well. There you go, that looks much better. Let's check the brights. Very nice. And here's what we look like on the road. And there's the brights. So there you have it. That's the install of the Loyo LED headlights for my Jeep Wrangler or anything with the 5x7 headlight. But the question that I need an answer to from you guys is, is this acceptable to put on a square headlight Jeep with the round DRLs? Are we tricking other people into thinking it's got round headlights? Are we not paying the correct respect to the square headlight history? You decide. Go ahead and tell me down below in the comments, should these stay on the YJ or should they go on something else entirely? Let me know in the comments and of course, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for coming by and watching this install.